Hey what is going on guys this is Tharsha and welcome back to another video on the channel. Today we're going to be looking at the best build for Aragorn in Lord of the Rings Rise to War. So if you guys do enjoy this video then please do drop a like, comment and subscribe to the channel and don't forget to turn on those post notifications. Also click that join button below if you want to become a channel member. Anyway let's get straight in. Okay so Aragorn. Aragorn is a damage commander and therefore we're going to look at his army first. Army for him will be a full tank army because you're going to need him to survive all 10 rounds of battle or more, more appropriately you're going to need his army to survive all 10 rounds of battle so that Aragorn can get the maximum damage in so for good factions obviously you're going to all have access to guardians so that's what I would recommend just stick an army of guardians on him if you want add some master throwers or some elvis sentinels or bow knights or something else if you do want your army damage to also be a bit farther up there or if you have access to a good t4 like iron warriors then throw them in but basically for your army all you're going to want is a very tanky front line that can survive all 10 rounds of battle to allow aragorn to deal the most damage next we're going to look at his skill build so oh not skill build he's gear build so for gear you're going to want to go for a full might build because anything that gives might will increase damage dealt by the commander aragorn's a damage commander all his damage is going to come from the commander himself and his skills so might is the way to go so if you don't have a uh, good like purple or gold gear something like a urukai pike works amazingly because it has commander might plus 30 so that's 30 extra might and if it has the ability like pierce Normal attacks have a 50% chance of dealing an additional 26.6% physical damage, so that extra damage is amazing. And if they do allow you to refine blue gear in future, it will this ability will probably be dealing like an extra 100% physical damage and max refine. But obviously, you're gonna want something like that has might. So if you don't, if you're using purple gear, maybe something like uh, the Dwarven Hammer or something that preferably doesn't only affect one army type. Unless you're using Guardians, as I said, then you're perfectly fine using that. But yeah, just might, okay? That's what you're gonna want. For a chest plate, something like even a superior hauberk works really well because it gives you might only, but it also gives army defense. So that will allow your army to survive a bit longer because they'll have higher defense and take less damage. If you don't have that, then just anything else that does might. Something even like a scout's mail gives both might and speed. So that's pretty decent. Or even something like a quilted armor piece. Whatever gives you the most might, put that on him. In terms of helmets, something like this, the old case works amazingly because it gives the command another 30 might. So that's pretty good for a blue thing, 30 might. But if you do have something like an iron bassinet and you are using guardians or dwarves on him, then this also works really well as it gives might and it imp improves the defense of your dwarf units. For accessory, well, there's not really that many great might accessories, so I'd probably say Hithlane is the best. I don't actually have one because I use them all to upgrade my pipe but put a hit lane on there and just get gear that all focuses might okay aragorn gear build all you want is might gear everything that increases his might will increase his damage and make him more effective anyway on to the most important part of the video and that's his skill build so obviously i'm assume oh guys quick disclaimer right i'm assuming everyone who's doing watching this video has a level 50 aragorn unlike me because i don't and a r5 aragorn which i do have so that will give you 55 skill points plus another two more actually from his title balanced balance gives plus two skill points so that'll give you a total of 57 skill points and that's what i'm going to be working with on this build obviously if you do have another four skill points from imparting wisdom to your commander that's amazing it will make him a bit more effective or if you have him at a high respect level as well that works out great so the skill build the first thing you're going to want to do is put 15 points into Anduril because Anduril gives you every third round against two enemy targets deals 300% physical damage. Max level effect increases your might and as I said might is important. The more might you have the more damage your commander will do. So this is an amazing ability. Two enemy targets will both receive 300% physical damage and you'll get a bit of bonus might and this activates every third round. The next thing you're going to want to max out is Call the Weak. So this activates every other round, aka every second round. And against one enemy target or against enemy target with the lowest defense, it deals 210% physical damage. So basically what this means is it's normally going to target ranged units because ranged units tend to have a lower defense than a tanky frontline unit. For example, if you're fighting guardians and sentinels those sentinels are going to have a much lower defense value than the guardians and the call the weak is going to hit those sentinels and do a lot of damage to the ranged which is normally what is outputting the most damage to your army so call the weak is a really good skill seven out of seven against enemy target with the lowest defense it deals 210 percent physical damage the next thing you're going to want to max out is weapons expertise 
and this gives the command a 50% chance of gaining damage plus 7.1% though this is at level 1 only max level this will be a lot more so just remember this was really good as well and it's a 50% chance obviously so it doesn't activate every round but there's a pretty good chance of it activating because it is 50% so 50% is a 50-50 chance and yeah so you're gonna want to max that out next with seven points so that's gonna be 15 7 14 that is going to be 29 skill points used up next you're gonna to want to put 14 points into strider strider itself it just increases the base stats from equipment by two percent per level so yeah it's not that's not really the greatest i would rather uh hidden hair be uh, but unfortunately it's not so you're going to be having to upgrade strider though only upgraded to level 14 out of 15 because you're not going to have enough skill points otherwise to uh for your other two skills so max level effect ignores the race restrictions of all equipment so this just means if you have equipment that can't go on a man commander normally you'll be able to use it on aragon if you do max this out however you're only going to be putting him on level 14 out of 15 or putting this title on level 14 out of 15 unless you have imparted wisdom and you have those four extra skill points then you can put him at 15 out of 15 or if you have him at a higher respect level anyway 14 points on strider and then you're going to put seven out of seven into precise blow so this activates every other round aka every second round and against one enemy units it will deal 40 percent physical damage once so obviously you have to uh, look at what that will do at max level and then this damage carries the pursuit effect and pursuit ignores the target's evasion so basically whenever aragon activates precise blow your target will not be able to evade this even if they have 100 percent evasion the pursuit effect will ignore that or negate that and you'll still hit your target next you have raid so it has the rush ability rush basically means that even though this skill activates every third round it will also activate on the first round so it can activate the skill immediately after the battle begins so on the first round you're going to activate rush and against one enemy target it will deal a bunch of physical damage so 35 well 34.2 percent physical damage and it will have a 50 percent chance to activate and deal an additional 34.2 percent damage so obviously maxed out that will be a lot more than just 34.2 and that's going to be your skill build okay because it's going to be four, 15 points from enduro 14 points from strider that is going to be 29 points then it's going to be 7 14 21 28 and that is going to be, take you all the way up to 57 skill points which is what you have you have 50 from having him at level 55 from having him at respect 5 and 2 from his title balance and that's going to be your 57 skill points spent so just to quickly go over it again and you roll 15 out of 15 call the week 7 out of 7 weapons expertise 7 out of 7 strider 14 out of 15 only Precise Blow, 7 out of 7, and Raid, 7 out of 7. Now, if you do have him at a high respect level, Slay, you have him at respect 6, then what you're going to do with that extra skill point now is you're going to put it into Hidden Air, and that's because it increases his skill damage by a little bit. That really doesn't matter at this level with only one point there. But more importantly, it, you al it allows you to gain initiative during combat. So initiative means you can act fast this round. This means Aragorn will be acting fast every single round. So it's amazing because you're going to hit fast every round, even if you're fighting uh, another commander that's got very high speed, like a Theoden or Eowyn or something, your commander will still act first, hit and pop off his skills or his damage and deal a lot of damage to the target's army. Then the less of the army that's alive, obviously, the less damage you can receive in return. So that's what you can do if you have one more uh, respect level. So you have respect level six instead of five. Or if you have one skill point from imparted wisdom. If you do have all four skill points from imparted wisdom, then instead of just putting one point in here, you're going to put one point in strider as well, just to max it out and have that max level effect. That just allows you to use any equipment you want to use on him and the, all the extra points will go into it in here so if you have him doesn't matter how many extra points you have everything goes into it in here okay if you have four from imparted wisdom or if you have a respect level 10 which gives you an extra five and four that's an extra nine points you'll put one into strider and the other eight into it in here and that will just increase his skill damage which makes endural which makes call the weak which makes precise blow and rate that much more effective anyway let's go and have a quick review of everything that we went over in this video so first things first, in terms of army composition, you're going to want a very tanky unit so that you're, you can survive all 10 rounds of battle and allow Aragorn to deal damage for all 10 rounds of battle. Though if you want, you can also sub in some master throwers or some bow knights or sentinels or something like that, just so your army can do more damage. If you do have a tier 4 unit, like because you're playing Erebor, then stick some Iron Warriors in there instead because they're you know just that much better than Guardians. Though Guardians with the fire resistance now 
a little bit better when facing a lot of alchemists but if you're play fighting good side then you're not going to be dealing with that obviously and next you're going to want to go to your gear and for your gear you're going to want full mighty gear whether it's blue purple or legendary gear everything you want everything you have you must try to have might okay because might is going to increase your commander damage and allow him to just deal more damage in terms of skills well if you have madness resist great if you have stun resist or stun immunity i mean great and if you have pierce that's amazing as well because it's going to allow your commander to just do that much more damage in terms of your skills you're going to put 15 points into enduro 7 points into call of the week 7 points into weapon expertise 14 points into strider not 15 only 14 because at respect level 5 with 50 skill with a level 50 and the 50 skill points that you get from that plus the two from his title you're not going to have enough to max out strider but with the while putting seven into precise blow and seven into rate so instead of 15 here you're only going to put 14 into strider seven into precise blow and seven into raid and that'll be all your skill points spent however if you do have him at a high respect level then you can max out strider just so you have that max level effect of being able to use any equipment and any spare skill points will go into hidden yeah, because it will increase your skill damage and you will gain initiative during combat anyway i hope you guys did enjoy this video if you did please do drop a like comment and subscribe to the channel and don't forget to turn on those post notifications anyway i'll see you guys in the next video Ichigo.